What's going on? It's Suck and I'm back with a brand new video on Super Duper Tech. Now in today's video, I shall be showing you the results that I got when running a number of different benchmarking tests on the higher end 2020 5K iMac. Also, the full specification for the machine that I'm testing in today's video can be found down below in the description. Also, we are on the road to 5,000 subscribers and if you are new around here, then I must ask you to hit the subscribe button clicking the bell to be notified of when I upload any of my new videos but without any further ado let's hit the titles The first benchmarking application that I ran on this iMac was Geekbench 4. Now Geekbench gives a score for both single and multi-threaded tasks and after these have then been performed it will give a score based on its performance and the time taken to perform them. Now the scores that I got for the single core side of things was 6209 whereas on the multi core side of things I got a higher score of 32348. Once again, using Geekbench 4, I ran the compute test to see how well the OpenGI engine ran through Geekbench. And as you can see with this particular test, I got a score of 127,779. The next test that I ran was once again from Geekbench's compute lineup of tests, this time testing how well the Metal Engine ran on this iMac. Now with this I got a score of 129,265. The next test that I ran was once again from Geekbench, but this time their newest set of tests found in Geekbench 5. And when running the CPU test, I got a single core score of 1,256, whereas on the multi-core side of things, I got a score of 7,499. Like I previously had done, I ran the compute test to see how well both the Metal and OpenGI engine ran on this iMac. Now on the OpenGI side of things, I got a score of 40,586, whereas on the Metal test, I got a score of 36,998. The next benchmarking application that I ran on this iMac came from GFX Bench, GFX Bench Metal, which is designed to run a number of tests using the Metal Graphics Accelerator. These tests vary from both higher and lower levels of intensity, and in the interest of saving time, I've calculated the average for each of these results, but of course I will show you each individual result. Now the average that I got for the higher intensive task was 254.02 frames per second, whereas for the lower intensive tasks, I got a much higher frame rate of 456.99. And after running an SSD speed test on the entry 5K iMac, I was curious to find out if the SSD read and write speeds on the higher end iMac would be similar, they were completely different. Of course, if you want to check out the results that I got for that particular model, then click the card in the top right corner. But with this iMac, I got read speeds of 2348.2 megabytes per second and write speeds of 2344.8 megabytes per second. Now I've said it before it's great to see that we finally got ssds across the board in all of apple's macs but at the same time you can definitely tell which ones you're paying more of a premium for Next up we have NovaBench. Now NovaBench is a good general benchmark as it tests not only the CPU and GPU but also the system storage and memory. Now with this particular test I got a score of 2590. I then chose to perform a basic network speed test and got a download speed of 211 megabytes per second and an upload speed of 21 megabytes per second. Now,
Next, I did a timed video export using Final Cut Pro, exporting a five minute, 24 second video file to H.264, above full HD 1920 by 1080 and UHD 4K 3840 by 2160. It is also worth noting that with this test, I had turned off background rendering. And would you look at that? It took around one minute and two seconds to complete an export of a video file that is almost five times as long. While the 4K project completed its export in around 2 minutes and 30 seconds, which all things considered is bloody brilliant. The last series of tests that I performed came from Unigen, the first of these being their Heaven benchmarking test, which is a heavy CPU and GPU test, which will give a general score based on its performance and then an average frame rate for when rendering out a particular scene. Now with Heaven, I got an average frame rate of 69.2 frames per second, whereas I got a score of 1742. Once again, from Unigen benchmarking tools, the last test that I performed was the Valley test, which performs a similar set of tests to the previous one. Now with this one, I got an average frame rate of 80.2 frames per second and a much higher score of 3,354. So as you're probably expecting, this Mac was a bloody brilliant one to test. And as you can tell, the scores that I got were very, very good. And with those particular lineup of graphics tests that I just conducted, I'm very curious to find out how this particular iMac model fares when we throw a few games at it. So if you are interested in that, be sure to subscribe clicking the bell icon to be notified of when I upload that video. Also, at some point in the near future, I will be testing the complete 2020 iMac lineup. So once again, if you are yet to subscribe, well, you know what to do. Also, if you have got any questions with anything you've seen in today's video, then be sure to leave them down below in the comment section or alternatively, you can hit me up on my social media. Links are on the screen and down below in the description. And in all fairness, it's the best place to get a hold of me. But as always, thank you very much for watching and I'll see you next time. Have a good one.